Welcome to Kiss and Tell Scrapbooking with Katie Scott. I am going to do a little something different today and read an essay that is appearing on my blog. Uh, I'm going to just turn that down just a little bit. And the essay is called Five Common Reasons for Scrapbookers Block and Five Easy Ways to Solve It and Get Scrapbooking. And you have to know this. <laughs> I did this entire thing right before this and the audio did not record so fingers crossed. Scrapbookers, imagine this. You just received your print order, several envelopes of your latest and greatest pictures and now you have a new and exciting stack of awesome photos just waiting to be scrapbooked. There's birthday party photos, photos from your last vacation, and some really adorable photos of your eight-year-old. You are all excited to scrapbook at them you rearrange some things on your to-do list and somehow find three hours of uninterrupted scrapbooking time. You put your photos in your photo organization system. You get out your adhesives, your scalloped edge scissors, and a new pack of embellishments sh shown at the latest CHA. Ready, set, and nothing. Instead of go, you are at a dead end stop. You stare at the dreaded blank page and then it hits you the dreaded scrapper's block. Have you ever been hit by a scrapper's block? If you are a kid, chances are you haven't, and you can stop reading and go play now. But if you are a scrapbooker who is over the age of 18, then you might just know what I'm talking about. If you haven't experienced scrapbooker's block, or perhaps you just need a better definition for this frustrating condition, here's how Wikipedia defines this common scrapbooker's ailment. Please note that I took some liberties with the writer's block definition and adapted it for our concern, scrapbooker's block. Just check in to make sure I'm still on there. I'm still, it looks like I'm, I am. <laughs> um, scrapbooker's block is a condition primarily associated with scrapbooking as a hobby in which the creative goddess loses the ability to produce new layouts. The condition varies widely in intensity and it can be trivial, a temporary difficulty in choosing how many photos should go onto a particular layout or which embellishments to use for a visual triangle on the page to tie it all together. Please leave me alone right now and I'll be finished in a few minutes. Go away. What are you doing? Scrapbooker's block can also occur when your 10 year old comes in without a shirt on. Go put a shirt on. What is that? Um, <laughs> it's like that kid on the middle is never wears a shirt anymore. I don't understand. Um, in, okay, let's see where we were. The condition wa varies widely in intensity. It can be trivial, a temporary difficulty in choosing how many photos should go onto a particular layout or which embellishments to use for a visual triangle on the page to tie it all together. At the other extreme, some blocked scrapbookers have been unable to work for years on end and have been known to continue to buy supplies despite the complete stop of production of scrapbooking layouts or mini books. Yeah, scrapbookers block, as a side note, can also occur when your kids keep coming into your scrapbooking room. But as a very, very side note and tangent to that is I do encourage it. So they're welcome in here. Um, train of thought. <laughs> it's coming back, I promise. Okay. Oh, again. Those little memory makers. Oh. There's a story, but there's a story people quote that says, that says something like, there are angels here on earth and their main purpose is to make sure that you're not too comfortable. I definitely have a few of those angels. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> All right, are, are we back to scrapbooker's block? Yes, let's get back there. Um, scrapbooker's block can manifest as the affected scrapbooker viewing her work as inferior or unsuitable, when in fact it could be the opposite. Scrapbooker's block is a common affliction that most memory keepers will experience at one time or another. It is the inability to begin or continue scrapbooking for reasons other than the lack of basic skill or commitment. Who's been there? I know I have more than once. Can I get an amen, scrapbooking sisters? Scrapbooker's block can be caused by five of these common problems. 
Number one, lack of inspiration. Oh sure, there are dozens of inspiring projects on Pinterest and over at Two Peas, but nothing really speaks to you, and your creativity just isn't sparked by anything. Not even a glittery fire lit with hot off the CHA floor patterned paper by scrapbooking load coach Lane Amon herself. I know that's an atrocious, atrocious sentence structure, sorry about that. Number two, over-awareness of the audience. Whether your audience is, is your own family or your online scrapbooking friends, you can't seem to make anything because you keep thinking about what so-and-so will think of your completed scrapbook project. So you just don't start or complete anything. Number three, external circumstances like stress or the health issues of a scrapbooker. And this will happen to all of us at one time or another. Number four, sophomore syndrome. The intimidation from a previous success. Maybe you had a layout published in a magazine or were recognized in an online scrapbooking gallery. And now you are afraid to make another layout because you think it won't be as awesome as the last layout. Or number five, and perhaps the most dreaded of all, trying to be perfect. You can't seem to do anything at all for fear that it might not be perfect and you'll ruin your photos, your supplies, or worse yet, your own ego. Let's check in with Wikipedia again and see what they have to say about the brain on scrapbooker's block. Again, I'll take some liberties and rephrase it to make it crafty. Scrapbooker's block is more than just a mentality. Under stress, the human brain will shift control from the cerebral cortex to the limbic system. The limbic system is associated with the instinctual processes such as fight or flight response because the person is primarily thinking in instinctual or learned behaviors. Creative processes are hindered. The person is often unaware of the change which may lead them to believe they are creatively blocked. So enough of the problem. Chances are you are just as familiar as I am with the causes or stresses of scrapbooker's block. What you want to know is how to do you cure scrapbooker's block. Number one, take a scrapbooking class or listen in on a scrapbooking class group discussion. A few years ago, I took Lane Amon's layout a day or load challenge. And this is the exercise of making a scrapbook layout every day for a month. It helped me get to a place where I could scrapbook no matter what. I think the key factor in this system is the short deadline. Number two, well, it's a subset too. <laughs> While I have been scrapbooking for well over a decade, I still take an occasional scrapbooking class to keep things fresh. My favorite place to take classes is Big Picture Classes, and I'm currently taking Stacy Julian's 12 class, along with Elizabeth Dillow's 12 Challenges class. My favorite scrapbooking discussion group, otherwise known as a podcast, is the Paper Clipping Roundtable podcast. This airs on iTunes every week and is about an hour long, and topics include scrapbooking organization, the process of scrapbooking, scrapbooking tools and tricks, and really anything that relates to scrapbooking. <laughs> and listening in always gets me in the mood to do some scrapbooking. Okay, big number two. Keep a scrapbooking ideas journal. Whether you keep your ideas in a plain notebook or a fancy dancy embellished journal or on your iPhone, Writing things down helps, even if you never go back to the list. The act of having written down an idea helps to keep it and grow it in your mind. Depending on your personality, you may love or hate lists, but either way, try writing down ideas for a month and see if your ability to overcome scrapbooker's block improves. My bet is that it will. Pinterest is also a great place to keep ideas. Major warning! Pinterest is also a major time waster and can result in feelings of insecurity and inferiority since there are amazing professional ideas and photos there. So use Pinterest with caution. Number three, do some free scrapbooking. My husband often tells the story, I'm just checking, <laughs> of how he was a bad student until he learned the trick of getting ready to do homework. He graduated magna cum laude from uh, law school, so he was in the top 10 of his class, so he learned a thing or two about being a good student. 
he'd tell himself that he was just getting ready to do some homework. He'd get out his books and pencils and a snack and sit at the desk and he didn't pressure himself to actually do anything. But he says that once he was all set up and sitting there, he'd actually do his homework. Try that with your scrapbooking. Get some photos out, get some paper, don't pressure yourself to make anything. But if you get an, even an inkling of inspiration, jump on it and with whatever gave you that spark. Another idea is to make a card or a page in an ongoing mini book with a standard structure. Or just start doodling or punching freehand or cutting some pattern paper. Just start moving and your brain will follow. Number four, just do it. Make a page even if it's not perfect, especially if it's not perfect. In fact, make an imperfect page. Take your worst, blurriest photo and your ugliest piece of pattern paper and make a page. Just do it. Once that's out of your system, you'll have at least done something. The fact that it's not awesome will give you the confidence to make the next one a little bit better because it couldn't be any worse. Just try it. In the alternative, set your kitchen timer for 15 minutes and don't spend any time thinking. Just do this. Number one, open your photo file and pick one without looking. Take one minute. Number two, pick a neutral colored cardstock and don't spend more than 30 seconds picking. Number three, pick some letters, give, your, give yourself one minute. Number four, paste all that stuff together. Number five, write something on the page. Just draw four or five lines and start writing. Five minutes tops. You are at number six. You are now at about eight and a half minutes in and you can call it done if you like, but if you wish, Pick a few embellishments and stick them down in a visual triangle. Five minutes tops. And there, you have a page done. Within 15 minutes, you can do it. Number five, find a positive place to share your work. On, um, ugh. Number five, find a positive place to share your scrapbooking work. If you've been scrapbooking for any length of time, chances are your family has lost the level of excitement for your scrapbooking layouts that they may have had in the beginning. You need scrapbooking friends, my friend. This is their job. Feedback can be awesome. Find a place where you can find some friendly scrapbookers who are at a similar, similar scrapbooking skill level and share your work. You can set up a Flickr group or join in a variety of many, many online scrapbooking communities. Just, or just pick a few friends to show. Just pick people that are positive. I hope that is, this has been helpful, or at least a little bit entertaining. Um, I hope that you're still with me after child and dog interruptions, if you can hear my barking dog in the background. Um, please leave a comment on my blog, Kiss and Tell Scrapbooking at typepad.com to share your most common cause of scrapbookers block and your favorite solution. <laughs> And if you'd like to learn more about scrapbooker's block or even writer's block, I've left some links to some books about writer's block on my blog. I am Katie Scott with a very aging Labrador who <laughs> wants us to know he's still alive. Um, coming to you from kissandtellscrapbooking.typepad.com. Thank you for watching.